Good morning, my Renews Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning, unidentified man fatally shot during alleged confrontation with Trelawney cops. The Independent Commission of Investigation and the Inspectorate of Professional Standards Oversight Bureau have commenced their respective probes into the fatal shooting of a man during an alleged confrontation with the Trelawney police on Wednesday. The man has not been identified, but the police say a Glock 9mm pistol was seized from the deceased following the shooting. The incident reportedly took place about 5 p.m. in the Spring Garden community in the parish. There were no reports of injury to any member of the police team. Five people rushed to hospital following Portland crash. Five people, including a young child, were rushed to hospital following a two-vehicle collision along the Orange Bay Main Road in Portland on Friday. East Portland Member of Parliament and Marie Vaz, who was passing the area following the crash, assisted with transporting the injured persons to hospital. Vaz said the child, who was bleeding from the face, was transported to the Port Antonio Hospital and is currently undergoing treatment. Four other persons, including two men and two women, were rushed to the Anata Bay Hospital, commented Vaz. The condition of the two women is not believed to be life-threatening. However, one man is bleeding from the face, while the other is suffering from injuries to the chest. I must commend the efforts of residents, the fire department, the police, and the health team for their quick response and the way they acted professionally in assisting the victims, she added. The news was informed that shortly after 3.30 p.m., a white Toyota Probox motor car heading in an easterly direction towards Port Antonio overtook two vehicles but collided with a gray Subaru motor car traveling in the opposite direction. The police have theorized that the driver of the Toyota Probox was unable to get the vehicle back into its lane in time to avoid the collision. Kingston Western Police listed nine persons of interest. The Kingston Western Police have listed nine individuals as a persons of interest. Investigators believe that these persons may be able to assist them with their ongoing probe into incidents in the division. They are Samuel Grant, otherwise called Hobby, Nevada Lyons, otherwise called Guan Bad, Rohan Tomlinson, otherwise called Popsy. Chevasia Magici, otherwise called Will, David Simmons, otherwise called Troy, Keon Campbell, otherwise called Wicked, a man known only as a Bugari, Clive Wallace, and AJ Vickers. These persons are being asked to report it to the Denham Town Criminal Investigations Branch by noon on Saturday. Anyone with information that can assist the police is asked to make contact with the Denham Town CIB at a 948 6443 or crime stop at 311. Persons may also contact the police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. Grange is saddened by death of TVJ videographer Ruben Nunez. Minister of Culture and Entertainment Olivia Grange says that she is deeply saddened by the death of videographer Ruben Nunez. Nunez, who was a videographer in Television Jamaica's production department, died on August 9. He became one of the best cameramen around and worked at Television Jamaica, CVM Television, and the Nationwide News over time. He was a talented and innovative videographer whose work showcased his creativity, skill, and dedication to his craft, Granger said in a media release on Friday. I recall fondly that when I was a junior minister, Responsible for information, I had identified Ruben among a number of young people with various skills in areas such as videography and writing for training under the Heart program. I am also proud of how he raised his two sons, who were his pride and joy, Grange added, describing Nunes as a true and a genuine person. In the calm concerned about a fatal police shootings. The number of fatal police shootings in recent months has raised the eyebrows of Hamish Campbell, Assistant Commissioner of the Independent Commission of Investigations, who has called for the Jamaica Constabulary Force to review its tactics 
when carrying out the planned operations. Every year since 2019, the number of fatalities by the security forces has increased and I think it is very important that the police primarily reflect on their tactics and actions. Are all these shootings necessary, proportionate, reasonable and accountable? Up to August 16 this year, there have been 106 fatal shootings of civilians. There were no comparative figures for the same period in 2023, but the figure for up to July 31 this year was 90 compared to 79 for the comparative period in 2023. And there were 67 fatal police shootings up to July 31 in 2022, according to data provided by Campbell. While acknowledging that the police do come under heavy gunfire from dangerous criminals on a daily basis, which gives them reasonable cause to respond with a deadly force, Campbell indicated that quite a number of the people killed, however, were not a gunmen. One was a 14-year-old boy and the two of them were women. Eight or nine of them were with mental health difficulties. They were armed not with a gun but perhaps a knife or a pickaxe or a stone. The numbers of fatalities are across a spectrum of Jamaican citizens but some people think that all of them are gunmen. They are not all gunmen so let's make that absolutely clear, said Campbell. Even some of the people who are reported to be gunmen are not found with any guns. I think it is important that the numbers become transparent so people are aware and so the police can reflect on it. A part of the debate we had was that the increase in shootings this year and what we saw last year had arisen because there were more people being fatally wounded in planned police operations. Planned operations should be safe operations, Campbell said. He added that with so many police personnel present on some of these planned operations, there should be tactics and methods which allow them to make arrests and bring people before the court. The police must look at their own tactics because for every shooting account, we invariably get an opposite account from a witness, a girlfriend, a passerby, or closed-circuit television. This is why we keep going on about body-worn cameras, Campbell said. The Indicom Assistant Commissioner pointed out that CCTV footage has been countering some of what the police have been reporting following operations. He said that the Jamaica Eye Network of Camera Systems is becoming more prolific at capturing footage at the scenes as well as the cameras on the properties of citizens. A number of cases we investigate do have footage from Jamaica Eye, CCTV or private residential cameras. That is becoming a more useful method of investigations and if the officers wore body cameras, that would also help. Officers will give an account. They may have been fired upon and that certainly is traumatic and their recall and memory of the event will almost always be inaccurate and sometimes just plain wrong. CCTV sometimes shows a different perspective in terms of the number of shots fired, what happened immediately afterwards who did this or did that, as well as determining if the man had a gun or was the man firing a gun, as the police say. In some of these instances, CCTV shows a different view, Campbell said, while highlighting that CCTV footage also serves to vindicate cops involved in fatal shootings. We have a recent case that is still under investigation where CCTV accurately showed what happened to the officer and his account was almost a verbatim as what was on the CCTV. He was indeed the subject of a gun attack upon himself. Our role is to get the best evidence from everywhere and that allows the police force to determine restraint where necessary, proper tactics and the prevention of loss of life and injury as far as possible, he said. If their intention is to arrest these people and bring them before the courts, the killing of them is a failure of the operation. Many of them are dangerous men, but if the police are saying, we want him because he is wanted for murder, that's great, but if they are killed, we don't know what the outcome would ever have been. They are supposed to be bringing these men to court. They should be properly arrested, brought before the court, and charged for the murders and all the things that they do. Guys, thanks for watching. Please join us this afternoon at 2 p.m. for another news update.